Welcome to this month's Canva Planner Tutorial. For the month of March, I really wanted to create a peaceful and positive atmosphere with the theme. So I went with the cherry blossom flower and added soft pink elements across all the planner pages. Canva.com is an online graphic design website that allows you to design anything from planners to social media posts, invitations, videos, etc. To start, click on Create a Design at the top right corner. Then click on Custom Size and enter the dimensions of the design you want to create. I am creating an A5 design. To add an element, click on Elements on the left. In the search bar, I searched for Cherry Blossom Watercolor. Then I clicked on Graphics. On the first page, I'm going to collect all the possible graphics that I want to use as decorations throughout the planner. Now that I've collected all the elements that I want to use as decorations, I'm going to create my cover page for March. For the cover page, I simply copied and dragged this graphic onto the page and resized it. I added a heading by going to text on the left and clicking on add a heading. With the pro version of Canva, you have a lot more font and element options, but the free version is just as good and still has a lot of options. Also, if you want an element or a font that is not part of the free version, you can simply purchase that element separately. On the next two pages, I'm going to create my calendar for the month. For the grid of the calendar, I went to Elements on the left and searched Grid in the search bar. Then I clicked on Graphics. I wanted the calendar to spread over the two pages, so I copied the page and cropped the grid on the new page to only be two columns wide. Then I added in the heading as well as the days of the week. On the second page of the calendar, I wanted to add a notes section on the right. First I added the heading, then I went to elements and chose the line under lines and shapes. You can drag this line to the desired length and at the top you can also adjust the thickness and type of line. Then I just copied the line multiple times to create the lined notes section. I decided I want the heading to also stretch over two pages. At the bottom right, I clicked on the square to get an overview of all the pages. This is how I can see if all the elements are balanced. Next, I added in some decorations.
You can bring certain elements forward or backward by clicking on position at the top. I decided to change the fonts of the days of the week and the numbers of the calendar to the same font that I used for the titles. On the next page, I want to create the monthly budget spread, but honestly, I was a bit too lazy to create it from scratch. I already created a monthly budget spread in my previous monthly planner setups, so I went to my January planner and copied the monthly budget. If you want to see the tutorial of how I created this monthly budget spread, you can just go and watch my January planner tutorial. After I copied the monthly budget onto the March Planner, I changed the fonts, colors and positions of all the elements to match the theme of the planner. When you change the color of an element, you can click on change all at the bottom left to change the color of all the same elements. But keep in mind this does change all the same elements across the whole design and not just on the one page. For example, if you click on a heading and change the color, then click on change all, then the color of all the headings across the whole design will change to that color. This decoration element didn't feel full enough for me, so I copied and pasted the separate flower and made it look like part of the decoration. This flower is a bit darker than the original element, so I clicked on Edit Image at the top, then I clicked on Adjust and I adjusted the brightness of the flower so that it fits in better.
I copied the same decoration element and cropped out a little piece to add to the decoration. Next, I want to create my monthly task list as well as a goal section. I copied the notes section of the calendar and pasted it onto this page for the task list. I also added some more lines by copying and pasting the existing lines. I wanted to add a checkbox on each line, so I went to Elements, then Lines and Shapes and clicked on the square frame. Keep in mind the more you zoom in, the more control you have over the sizing and positioning of elements. For the goal section, I inserted three squares which I got from elements and then lines and shapes. each square I will write my goal and then underneath that I will write all the steps I need to do to achieve that goal. I felt that the lines of the task list were too close to each other and to spread out each one of them would be quite the task. So instead I just deleted some of the bottom lines and stretched out the rest of the lines and checkboxes. The only problem now is that the lines are too long. So to solve this I went to elements and then clicked on the square. I will be using the square to cover the ends of the lines so that they don't look as long. On the next page, I will be creating my weekly planning spread. For the to-do list of the weekly planning section, I just copied the task list of the previous page as well as the box that covered the ends of the lines.
For the priority section, I wanted to create three boxes to write my top three priorities of the week. Underneath the priority section, I want to create a meal planning section. For each day of the week, I inserted the square frame and adjusted the size and shape. The next page is where I will be planning my daily to-dos. At the top I put the dates of that week and then I created a box for each day of the week. Again, to make the decoration fuller, I added in the separate flower and adjusted the brightness. Next, I copied the two weekly planning pages for each week of March and changed the dates. After some final touches, I went ahead and added a blank page between every planner page for printing purposes. I will show you how I print these pages in a minute. 
I downloaded the design in high quality PDF format. Now it's time to print the design. I want to print it in A5 size. So to print the first page, I selected page 1, then I selected 2 pages per sheet, and I set the scale to fit to paper. After the page is printed out, I put it back into the feed exactly as it came out. Now to print the second planner page on the back of the first page, I selected page 2 and 3, then I selected 2 pages per sheet. This is why I added the blank pages. Now I just repeat this process, printing out one page without a blank page and one page with a blank page in front. So for the next page I selected page 5, then I selected 2 pages per sheet. Then after that I will be selecting page 6 and 7 and then the design will be printed on the back of the previous page. This is just how I do it with my printer. If your printer does it differently, then you don't have to follow these steps. After all the pages are printed out, it's time to mark where the pages should be cut and where the holes need to be punched. I created this template to make the markings. To make the holes in the pages, I used this regular hole punch. I just removed the back so that I can see where to punch the holes.
and that was my March planner tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and also please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also leave a comment if you have a suggestion of what you would like to see in the future. And then I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!